Today we're going to try to electro etch some steel and possibly create a branding iron level of depth. So that's the goal for today. First we're going to cut the vinyl, weed it out here, and get ready to apply it. So we'll put some application tape on there, rub it on nice, trim out just what you need. And then we'll go downstairs and cut the piece of steel. I'm just going to get the grinder with the cutoff wheel. Long reach clamp there. Another clamp for good measure. And just use the 2x6 as a guide there. I put a couple scores in it and uh, avoid cutting through the whole thing. This way I can get a nice clean edge as well as not create as much steel dust all over the workshop. So that's good. There's my piece. So now we're going to go upstairs and clean it. And we're starting off with the brown scotch Bright pad. It's either brown or purple. It kind of changes. It's, it's a weird color. Um, just get all the debris off, any kind of oxidation, any kind of oils, whatever. You know the deal. Clean it. Switch over to the... Uh, go ahead and switch over to the green scotch Bright to get rid of any scratches. I find this helps. And uh, some rubbing alcohol. This is the main part here is to just make sure you get all the... Basically the powder, yeah, all that. Get it out of there. Make sure when you wipe that it's clean. That stuff is going to stop your mask from sticking. So you go ahead and wipe it all off until you start seeing that rag get pretty white without a lot of debris when you in between wiping here. There you go. It's getting better. Fold it over to a clean spot. Wipe. Yep, look at that. There, We're pretty good now. Let's stick that. Let's do it. There it is. So I found out on the last two runs that it's really helpful to heat the mask. Boom. Like that, or just like that. Heat it to the point where you can almost not even touch it um, on the front side. And then rub it on real nice. Get sure, Make sure you get all that adhesive stuck down, especially about around all the detailed areas. And I'm going to do it one more time, just for good measure. Yep. Heat it up, touch it. Mm, that's about as long as you can touch it right there. That little pause is all I got. Now we're just going to finish this, flip it over, put the rest of the mask on the back. Make sure you get the edges nice. Looks good. Now we're going to just flip it over one more time and get the positive lead. Clean that off a little bit. Fold over the edge of the extra tape there. And now we're getting ready. Plug in the positive, plug in the negative. Put in some near boiling water just to help the temperature rise and stir the pot a little bit. And we're going to throw the negative lead in. Still at 6 volts here from the setup for the copper the other day. I figured to see what happens. The same settings. Now we're putting that in the back side. I do that just to make sure there's no bubbles on there. And here we are. We're going to get it started. So we'll be back in about an hour to check it. All right, we're back and it's an hour later and well, is this way grosser than the copper after an hour. Just gonna check this out here. Ooh, almost a gross call. Holy shit. Looks like it's working. All right, so I went ahead and wiped down the uh, inside of this and you can tell here almost there is a significant ledge under that vinyl focus and I can get my there's also this on the edge here where the mask was covering so you can tell the difference here this is about what we've got going on right here So it's significantly deeper than the copper after one hour with the basically the same setup around six volts and then it slowly went down on its own. It's pretty deep. I think I'm going to leave it for another hour just for the heck of it and we'll come back and check it out. Uh, eventually the goal for this project to see how deep I can go with this vinyl is to see if I could potentially make a brand for burning into wood or leather. Uh, you see a lot of videos online where you need a CNC machine or hand, uh, basically hand engraving 
uh, pieces of metal and making brands that way. And I'm thinking maybe this is something that mm, could work. So we're going to see if I can get this deep enough, first of all, in this metal uh, to be able to get something that could possibly do that. And if it works, then we'll get thicker metal and do it again and try one more attempt. I also wanted to note that the meter is now reading 3 volts uh, even though it's cranked up so that's just what it does automatically. I set it for 6 and it just kind of tapers off toward the end. I think it's because the water isn't quite as hot anymore and because the solution is probably getting a little bit less intense and pretty disgusting. So after this and maybe another one or two I'll probably dump it and uh, start fresh again. But that's what happens. So we're down to 2.6 volts so another hour at that and we'll be back to check. It is now 3.30. I'll be back at 4.30. Alright, it's three and a half hours in. I think I'm going to just pull it now. It's looking pretty bad. Pretty gross. You can hear it. Listen, I'm going to shut it off. It's like the bog of eternal stench in Labyrinth. Only it doesn't really smell. It just looks like it. That's all. That's my point. That's all I'm driving at. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Alright, so we're going to pull this thing out. I think it's gonna be pretty cool. Looks pretty deep. All right, let me get to the sink. Okay, so we are back from the sink and this is some pretty amazing results. I am very, very excited, very happy with this. This is super deep. And this is after f almost three and a half hours. It was about three hours and 20 minutes at six volts. And this is amazing. These are all, I think that we could probably do this. Um, I'm I'm about halfway through this plate, I'd say, a little bit less than halfway through. You would uh, attach something to the back of this so you could stamp it, brand something like you're branding a piece of leather or um, you know wood or something. I think we've got potential. I was more worried that the mask was going to start going, but as I see, there is no problems whatsoever. So I think next time I'm going to do this test and I'll do it. I'll leave it for like six hours and just see what happens. And uh, I think we could get up pretty close to having a way of metal branding without using a CNC machine. I know I use vinyl cutter, but I mean the idea is you could get a sheet of vinyl and hand cut something and just do the same thing yourself. So just because I have a vinyl cutter doesn't mean I have a, you know, a special tool. I could cut this out by hand or print it out and then just trace it, you know, with an X-Acto knife or something. If you're only doing one and etching it, that's the point of a brand, right? You do it once. And then you don't have to do it a million times. So I think it's a worthy project. Um, I thank you for coming along. Hopefully we learn some stuff together here. And uh, we'll try to keep something interesting. Thumbs up if you like this video. Until next time.